Hello, I'm Jamila Musaiva, an international social etiquette consultant and author of Etiquette Books. Etiquette, the least you need to know, and afternoon tea etiquette. If you would like to order my books, you can do so directly now on my website. I'll link it here as well in the description box below. If you are a new viewer on my channel, welcome. Here I talk about etiquette, soft skills, self-development. So if you're interested in all of that, make sure to subscribe and hit the bell button so you get notified every time I upload a new video. And if you're a returning viewer, welcome back to my channel. I'm delighted to see you back here. By the way, this video is sponsored by Copilot. Copilot is an affordable fitness coach app that provides personalized workouts tailored for your goals and available equipment at hand. What I personally love about Copilot is I get to meet, talk, and chat with my personal trainer over the app to discuss my fitness goals, my progress, and things I would like to get out of my trainings. It's perfect for me because it gives me flexibility to work around my schedule. I choose the days and hours and even the duration of my workouts and the trainer creates a workout plan to fit my needs. My coach is Chris, whom I communicate with via chat, with videos and messages, and she keeps track of my progress, which makes me accountable to her and keeps me in check. I've asked her to focus more on building strength and work in my arms, back and lower body, and she has created a plan for me to work exactly on that. I've also asked her to keep my workouts under 30 minutes so I can always make time for them in my busy schedule. I love that I can just do it from the comfort of my home. I even do these workouts when I travel now because I have my personalized trainer at the tips of my fingers on my app. What makes Copilot especially fitting to me is that it gives me a personal connection with a trainer who is able to guide and track my fitness progress and adjust it along the way to suit my personal goals. Click my Copilot link to get 14 days free trial with your own own expert fitness and health coach. As you can tell from what I'm wearing and where I'm standing right now, this video is about something that was so highly requested on my channel as well as on my Instagram, is how I maintain my body weight and how I take care of myself uh, in terms of fitness and diet. So this is the most honest and open uh, video about my personal tips and tricks. Make sure to watch this video until the very end because in the second part of this video, I'll show you what's inside of that bag and some special tricks that I have for you. If you're someone who hasn't been following me on Instagram or is a new viewer on my channel, I am a mother of two. Uh, my daughter is eight years old and my son is turning five very soon. And ever since that I have you know, been conscious of myself and remembered myself, I've pretty much been the same way, except for the time when I was pregnant. So oftentimes people ask me on Instagram, what is my height and my weight? Uh, my height is 173 or 75. I haven't measured myself in a really long time. And as you know, as you age, you get kind of shorter. And my weight it fluctuates between 50, 51 kilograms. It's usually one plus one minus kilo it's never within a really large range and uh, there are a couple of things that i think are important to take into account when we're talking about body weight and proportions and obviously some of them are obvious and other ones people often forget but i think are quite very obvious as well it is uh, genetics uh, your diet, your lifestyle, and then you can also have some special tricks and treats that can help you uh, maintain a certain body weight. So first things first is genetics, and that is something that people often forget when they look at others on Instagram or they watch someone you know they admire so much is that you don't know what their genetic composition is. So the body proportions are very much genetically influenced. Your bone structure, you know, your hip, waist, and um, breast measurements. So all of that is really something that you take on from your parents. So that is number one important thing that we need to keep in mind when we're working with our own proportions and our own dimensions is that, you know, if someone is more is taller than you, um, don't feel jealous. It's nothing that they achieved on their own. It's something that they were gifted by their uh, genetic pool. So keep that in mind whenever you're watching someone and admiring them that certain things are just genetic factor. With that being said, when someone asks me, you know, how are you so slim after two kids? And I say, it's genetics first and foremost. My mom is quite short and my dad is really tall, so I think I took after my dad. My body proportions are very similar to my dad's. He has longer arms and longer legs and that's not something that my mom has. So I think I've taken more after my father. I cannot say that my, you know, my mom maternal uh, side of the 
female family members are very slim and slender, they're not actually. And this is something I think then is up to my diet and up to my lifestyle that I've been able to meet in it. Though my dad's side of the family is more, uh, have a longer stature and they are uh, more on a slimmer side. So I think I took after him in a lot of ways. Uh, but then of course, as anyone else, if I eat too much, if I don't watch my weight, of course, uh, I like any other human uh, kind on earth, I'll also gain weight and uh, lose what I have right now. So. Uh, that's the no number one thing that I always mention is that it's primarily the genetic composition in terms of my height and the proportions. Number two is what you eat. So I have been very athletic my whole life. I've been doing sports here and there, but never professional or never so passionately. I'm not a very uh, sports loving person, so to speak, but I've made myself to kind of come to terms with it, that it's an important part of a lifestyle. So um, what I eat is, I think, the most important contributing factor to my body composition. And that's not just what I eat, but also what I drink. So the second important thing is your diet. Let's get into that. So what is my diet is something that I get asked a lot. Show me what you're eating throughout the day. I really don't have much time to take picture of what I'm eating because sometimes in just between the shoes, between taking care of my kids. So, but what I'll tell you is that there are certain things that I personally abide by or I've been grown up with, you know, seeing that. And that's like the, the rules that I've been applying to my whole adult life. And uh, I think there are main things why I'm able to keep the weight that I have. Number one is eating home cooked meal. I was brought up in a family where we only ate, you know, home cooked meal for the majority of time and only occasionally we would eat out. So even now as an adult, I prefer to eat at home and only on certain days when I'm out and about, I will eat outside but usually majority of my diet is homemade uh, cooked meal and those are really just nutritious very plain Azerbaijani national cuisine uh, dishes so it's meat poultry chicken fish uh, buckwheat rice pasta all kind of things that everyone eats uh, so that's majority of what I eat soups of course salads um, the second important thing that I was brought up with is I was never allowed to eat fast food until a very certain like, adult my adulthood I was restricted to eat anything that was like fast food like McDonald's and you know pizzas frozen pizzas so I didn't grow up eating that so even now in my adult life I don't crave those things at all I can occasionally have something but it's not something that I naturally eat on a daily basis uh, the third thing that I, my parents never allowed me to do is drink anything sweet like sweet sodas or drinks I was never allowed to have have anything like cola or Fanta or Sprite, nothing. So only when I moved to the United States, I could occasionally allow myself to have some diet cola. And that's not something that I crave on a daily basis, but you know, once in a blue moon, I'll have a can of diet Coke, but that's not something that's part of my daily diet. So the only thing that I drink on a daily basis is water, uh, tea, uh, black and green tea, as well as coffee. And I usually take all of that without any sugar. So I'll have some nuts with it. I might have a piece of chocolate if I'm craving something sweet I have something sweet with it but it's not something that I do you know every day and every other cup of, of tea I take with something sweet I usually just drink my coffee and uh, my tea without any sweets so that is about my drinking habit also people ask me if I'm drinking any alcohol uh, I will never have more than a sip of something if I'm offered a champagne glass or wine glass I might take a sip but I never really drink a full glass I just don't like the taste of alcohol and it doesn't bring me joy so I naturally don't uh, try to drink or avoid drinking so uh, I think that also has influenced my metabolism that it hasn't been slowed down by alcohol consumption and about my diet, I again don't have any strict rules as to, you know, these are the things that I eat and these are the things that I don't. I am not someone who is only into chia puddings, yogurts and avocado toast. I love them as well, but it's not something I eat on a daily basis. Uh, I eat very normal Azerbaijani dishes for, you know, that are home cooked. And this is pretty much what I have on a daily basis. I'll share some pictures here so you can see what I have, but there isn't really something that I follow strictly. I actually was someone who would always eat intuitively. So I would eat what my body craves at that particular moment. Um, Luckily, or maybe because I grew up having certain food eaten as a child, I don't really crave anything bad, so to speak, for you. So I don't have those, what you call guilty pleasures. Uh, but um, so what I crave is usually very healthy and normal. And I never restrict myself in eating in terms of when I really want something, I'll go for it. So 
ice cream is something that I like, uh, but it's not something I eat on a daily basis in the summer. But every once in a while that my body craves an ice cream, I'll have an ice cream and it's going to go full right on with chocolate and waffle and everything in it. So that's what I have um, in terms of the food. Also, I am someone who has been, uh, I guess, practicing intermediate fasting, but I didn't know about it then. Uh, it's something that we just recently learned about, but I would just eat, have a very big breakfast in the morning, then I would skip lunch because I wouldn't feel like I'm hungry. And then around five, six, I would get hungry and I'll have dinner and that will serve me until, you know, going to bed. But I would never go to bed hungry because I can never fall asleep. Uh, I don't believe that, you know, you should cut eating everything at six. If you're going to sleep at 12, it's six hours, that's a lot. So I'll have something like a snack or something to eat at like eight, nine, um, if I'm going to stay up a bit later because I physically can't fall asleep when I'm hungry. That being said, I think it's really about keeping everything in moderation and not going extremes in terms of not restricting yourself too much because when you do that, you end up you know, at one point just bursting it all out and going all the way in. I have never had very, like, unhealthy relationship with food because I really love enjoying good food. I take a lot of pleasure from that and I will not opt for non-fat if a fatty thing is something that gives me pleasure. I'd rather have a full spoon of something fatty rather than a whole can of non-fat. So that's my attitude in life. Um, in terms of, you know, when people ask me, what is your guilty pleasure? I say, I never have a term of guilty pleasure. Of course, I can say, you know, in the conversation, but I don't feel guilty for eating something. If I ate it, I just feel I'm happy that, you know, I enjoyed it. I take the pleasure in whatever I had, but rather than feeling guilty and guilt tripping myself for having that. Another thing that I realized is a lot of how our body is processing food depends on our thoughts. If we think this food is going to make me gain weight, trust me, even if it's just a water glass or a cucumber, it's going to make you gain weight. So it's really important to forget about, you know, that this food is going to serve you in a bad way. Think of it, it's going to serve you to look good, to glow, to feel healthy, to enjoy life. When you have this positive attitude with food, food will serve you really well. With that being said, I have never restricted myself with crazy diets. I've never dieted in my life. I am not for diets. There are certain things that, you know, uh, when I was in the US, I got, a, I worked in a biological lab for my biology class and we were working with uh, guinea weight pigs and I got really um, disgusted by the smell of it. So I couldn't eat meat for about five, six years of my lifetime uh, because that's just something that got associated with that. So I stopped eating meat for about five, six years. And then when I had my daughter, I started eating meat again because my body was craving it. So I I have never restricted myself from thinking, you know, I'm a certain follower of a certain diet, hence I can't take a bite of something because, you know, it's not allowed for me. Um, I guess I haven't reached that age yet where I can follow completely just one diet. I'm very flexible. I go with what my body craves. Also, another thing that I grew up never doing, so it's something that was actually very surprising for me to see in the United States is I never ever snacked. We never had an idea of snacking. It was breakfast and then we'd have lunch and then we'd have light dinner. We never really had, we had some stuff at the table like dried fruits and, and nuts, but I actually never reached out to eat them because I was already so full from the meal that I really didn't want it. Um, so it wasn't something that we grew up doing. So when I moved to the United States for college, it was very weird for me to see how students just in class would be nibbing on something, you know, some cheese sticks or some, you know, some canned something. And they would just have that in between their classes and between the meals. I would just strictly follow a certain meal, just have a breakfast, not have everything, anything until snack, until lunchtime. So I would probably have a cup of tea or a bottle of water until the next time that I take my meal. And another thing that I think I realized again, that came very intuitively to me is that I never force myself to eat if I don't feel hungry. For example, if I know it's 6 p.m. and everyone's having dinner and you must have a dinner, if I don't feel hungry, I won't eat. I'll eat when I'm starting to feel hungry. Not when I'm dying to, to eat, but when I'm already starting like it's time to eat. So I really listen to my body in that sense and I let my stomach rest from food uh, until the next uh, meal. So I don't, you know, uh, throw in a lot of things there to be digested. That's uh, generally my tips on dieting or on the food. So to summarize what I said about my diet is I don't snack at all. So I only have complete meals and I'll have two meals a day. I don't eat, I don't drink anything sweet. So I will have occasionally something, but on a daily basis, it's just water, tea and coffee. 
I don't have any crazy restrictions on myself. I eat what my body craves and what gives me pleasure and I enjoy it. I have a very healthy relationship with food. I don't have guilty pleasures. I mean, I, what you would call a guilty pleasure is an ice cream, but for example, uh, but I don't feel guilty of, for eating ice cream. I just feel the pleasure. So it's a guilty pleasure for which I don't feel any guilt for after I've had it. I just enjoy it and think, oh my God, this was so good. I'm so happy I had it. And um, I also opt for home-cooked meals, something that's prepared from scratch. So I try to avoid buying anything that we can microwave or, or uh, defrost it or just you know, prepare something on a quick. I prefer that my food is made from scratch. And I also, another thing that I forgot to mention is I really like simple foods. I don't really like a lot of sauces, a lot of different mixtures in it. I really like my food plain. I'll have, for example, buckwheat and meat cutlet. This is something that I love eating. I can eat it every day. So I like my food very plain so that's probably also one of the reasons it's easier to digest and it's just very something that's nutritious and good for you but it's also very filling so now i want to get down my mat floor and show you what is inside of this basket there are some things that are about sports and there are other things that are not related to sports but have really helped me keep the same shape um, throughout my adult life uh, i've gained about 16 kilos throughout my both pregnancies which is a normal weight gain for the pregnancy but pretty much you know a month or two after giving birth i've really quickly came back to my to the shape that i was initially in um, and I never, again, followed any strict diets. I was breastfeeding and uh, with the first, the first child, I didn't breastfeed for a really long time due to some personal health complications, but I could with my, with my son. And therefore I had to really watch out what I was eating. So nothing fried, nothing too salty, nothing too spicy. So my diet was very plain and I think that really helped me to come back to my original shape. And with that being said, of course, lifestyle. So activity is very important. I was never big on sports. I wasn't really hard, like working hard in sports. But um, since we live in a home, there are a lot of stairs up and down. So I would constantly be on the move with the kids in my hands, my little <laughs> lifting weights that I did with them. So I was just walking up and down the whole time. So I was always physically active. But it wasn't until I really started working out that my body became much more toned and a lot more healthy. Click my co-pilot link to get 14 days free trial with your own expert fitness and health coach. So now that I've seated down, I want to show you what's in this basket. I was inspired by Pinterest. I saw this little basket there with all the goodies that the person needed to work out. And after reading the book on atomic habits, how really whenever we want to acquire a new habit, we have to make it reachable and accessible for us. So there aren't a lot of obstacles on our way to you know, reaching out to do that activity. So if you really want to bike more, have the bicycle at your eyesight, at the reachable place so you can easily reach out for it. If you wanna you know, start running, have your running shoes by your bedside so you can easily reach it and start running. So really reducing the amount of obstacles that you have towards really starting initiating that activity because oftentimes the most difficult thing is to get started and also actually to keep going. I think that's even more difficult. But this has really helped me in terms of having this at the eyesight and it's easy to carry around so I can easily take it to any other room of, of our house and just have everything here ready for me to start working out. This yoga mat that I am seated on right now is my uh, usual yoga mat that I do my works out on. So I'll have it stationary here, but this is a smaller mat that is very light, very easy to carry around. You can just pop into your bag, carry on and just have it with you at all times. So you can continue practicing your uh, yoga or your stretching wherever you are. So this is just a smaller version of it. I really love this mat for just workouts in general. It feels really soft and it's almost like a queen size, but it's very difficult to carry it with you because it is really tall and it's very heavy. These ones are very easy to carry around so you never miss out on your workouts. So I will have this uh, here. So my workout is usually I have just started doing yoga. So I do twice a week yoga and twice a week stretching. 
uh, for the whole year before I used to do twice a week uh, lightweight training as well as stretching. So the reason I've stopped doing lightweight training is because I want to focus now more on the flexibility of my body and really learn to work with my own body, control it better, uh, improve my movements and just uh, be able to work with my own body weight. So now I'm just using very light weights that I have here. I think they're about one kilo each. So just heavy enough for me to do easy workout at home for my arms to keep them toned and i whenever i go to my stretching class i have extra weights for the foot so um they are you know wrapped around your foot and you can work out and the, the effectivity of the exercise is increased but at home i only have weights for my hands and no more than one or one and a half uh, because i just want my arms to be really toned i really don't want them to be you know super muscular so just enough of tone uh, you know tonus is enough for me so there's also this rubber thing that i have uh, the elastic band it's really good for resistance so it creates the resistance so you put a bit more effort uh, to do the simple kind of exercises i keep the routine of my exercises to the very simple minimum you know exercises but then just add either this or weights to kind of make it more complicated because that way i think it's just easier to have a certain routine that you're used to and then you just you know stick to it and do it really effectively because at the end of the day it's really about your consistency how consistently you work out and not intensity and it's really about how properly you do the exercise it's the technique that matters a lot more than you know the kind of exercise that you do uh, i also have this um I don't know these blocks they're called yoga blocks and they're really good when you are as well i use this as well in my stretching class and the thing about them is they allow you to kind of feel safe while you're just trying something new in terms of exercises if you're learning splits you can place it under your legs so that it you feel like there's a support system so they really ease the whole uh you know the whole adventure of trying something new and these are the set that i have with me at all times in this basket and um, I am able to reach out easily and just, you know, switch things or just make them accessible to me at all times. I have a different set at the stretching class that I go to, but at home I just have these. You know, as I already mentioned with me being also athletic and not very into sports, it's not something that I do because I'm so motivated to do it. And people often ask me, how do you motivate yourself to work out? It's really not about motivation. It's really about discipline. When it comes to working out, it has to be a part of your lifestyle and it really has to feel like something that you're doing like uh, brushing your teeth. You might not feel motivated every evening to wash, brush your teeth before bedtime, but if you don't do it, you're not going to have good teeth, right? It's really about understanding why you need to do it. So for me, working out was not as a means of, you know, losing weight because I was always at a certain, as, as a similar uh, weight range. So 50, 51 was like my weight range. So it wasn't really about losing weight, but it was about toning my body and feeling healthy in my body. I was someone who was skinny but not fit. So I was always very slender, but I didn't have strength in my hands, in my legs. I would get tired very easily. It was very difficult for me to do really simple exercises. But ever since I started working out and building up that stamina, I feel like I'm more powerful now. I have bigger stamina, more resistance now. I can do things more, more things throughout the day than I were, able, I were able to do, you know, when I was much younger. So for me, sports is now part of lifestyle and that's something I'm preaching my children as well. Um, and also because I'm a co-founder of the first and only gym for babies and toddlers in Azerbaijan called Jimbala. As a co-founder of this gym, I have to be an example for those kids as well that sports is part of lifestyle. It's not something you just do to get, you know, to lose weight, to look a certain way, but it's really to just feel healthy and it's just a part of your uh, hygiene, so to speak. The other two special tricks that I want to show you that are in this basket are probably something that you might have heard of or you're familiar with, but this has helped me a lot with uh, coming back to my shape in terms of my belly and my waist. So this is the good all-known waist trainer. 
Uh, I've had this waist trainer for a really long time. Initially, I was made to buy this waist trainer because I had my kid with a C-section and the doctor recommended that we get a waistband so that, you know, to keep my belly in, to tuck it in, to help it like go back to its original shape faster. So I was made to wear this about, you know, three to four hours a day and, you know, for as long as I could. But, you know, with this waist trainer, it's really hard to eat because you feel like you're filled up very quickly and it's really difficult to just feel comfortable around at home so I would start wearing it you know for as long as I could maybe an hour or two and slowly building up the duration of the time I would walk around with this waistband I haven't been using it to be honest in a really long time but I think with both pregnancies after both pregnancies this waist trainer has really helped me to get back into shape uh, first because I wasn't able to eat too much because it was restricting me and second I think is because it would kind of tuck it in and help to keep it in shape so um, this is something Something I will now and then wear but it's again something that I used to wear right after pregnancies and I highly recommend if you just gave birth or if you really want to work on your waist proportion if you want to work on your stomach you know help tuck it in then try the waist trainer it actually works and actually growing up uh, my parents made me wear this a special back trainer thing that I would have to put on when I was studying. So I would keep my shoulders and my back up straight. And that back strap or whatever back trainer had a strap that would go along your waist. So in a way, I think it also kept my waist intact, like small. It would cinch it. And so even after two kids, my waist is the same size and it's very small in proportion to the rest of my body. So I think it has helped me. Uh, it wasn't the, you know, the goal of it, but I think as an end result of wearing that trainer, it really helped me keep the waist uh, small. And another thing that I was told by a ballet teacher, uh, she wasn't teaching me, but you know, we were in a good, good relationship with her and she told me this thing that a lot of ballerinas or dancers are trying and that is whenever you're about to sit and eat if you are someone who you know doesn't feel like you're filled up quickly you kind of eat to have to eat more and more what you can do is work with this this I have this but you can use you know any threads or anything you would just tie it around your waist and keep it like that uh, whenever you're eating or even throughout the day you can do it even underneath your shirt or anything or sweater that you're wearing if it's just a very small thread or if you're at home and have something like this you can you know wear it for two three hours it it pretty much does the same thing I think as a waist trainer but when it's in, around your waist it keeps it in the same I guess form shape and also it really limits you into how much you can eat because it's keeping it kind of restricted in a way so if you want to start you know decreasing the proportion of the food that you're eating you can try this technique you can you know tie it around your waist when you're eating and just keep it an hour after so that you can always you know fill up very quickly and you can start controlling and bringing down the measurement of the amount of food that you're eating so this works for a lot of dancers and a lot of ballerinas and i think it should work for really anyone Thank you so much for watching this video until the very end. I hope that you enjoyed learning about my personal tips and tricks in maintaining my body weight. Let me know what are some of the tips that you personally liked and perhaps you have your own tips and tricks that you would like to share with our community. Thank you and I'll see you in my next video. Bye!